Hello Youtubers, today I would like to show you how you can make dishcloths out of the round knitting looms. And this is from the small one, and this one is from the medium sized one. So let me show you what you need to do to get started. You need either the small knitting loom, and this is 24 pegs, or you can use to make this size you can use the 30 peg, the blue one. But today I'm going to show you using the small green one. So let's move this aside. And this here is uh, the complete set. You get a larger one and an extra large one. And you can make hats out of it. But I will show you today how you can turn what would be a hat into a dishcloth. So, these are the things that you will need. You will need the knitting loom. You will need the hook that comes with it. You will need a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. And you will need yarn. I like using the Red Heart 4-ply acrylic yarn for this. You can use uh, like a softer sports yarn or something, but they won't be as durable. And the good thing with these ladies, you can, after you wash your dishes with them, you can just throw them in the washing machine and uh, wash them, put them in the dryer, dry them, and they're ready to go. You don't have to buy any more sponges. Sponges carry bacteria here, you know that. And they also clean. And at the end, ladies, I will give you a recipe that I used for my dish soap that I use with in conjunction with this. And my dishes are sparkling. You know how you have uh, on your glass casserole dishes, you have some uh, baked on grease and stuff. Well, using this and my dish soap recipe cleans it right off. So let's get started. The first thing you will want to do is let me just move those. Make a slip knot. You can make however you want. There's many different ways of making it. And what you want to do is, if you notice here, you have a peg here on the the bottom side of this. What you want to do this now. This is how I do it. You can go on YouTube, and there's lots of different videos on how to knit using the knitting loom. But this is just how I do it. I found it easier for me. What I do is I put it on the first peg and I leave it kind of loose to where I'll be able to uh, lift this up over the other stitch. And what you want to do now is I do it this way. You can do it clockwise or, but I like doing it counterclockwise. What you do is you take your working strand and it's called E wrap. And what you want to do is Take it behind, if I can get a hold of it here, take it behind the second peg around, wrap it to the front and bring it back behind, and behind the next peg around to the front, back behind, around the next one. And you do this, let me slow it down, behind the next peg, wrap it around in front of it, bring it back behind, and bring it behind the next peg in front around, back, or front, back, and you do this all the way around, and this, and you have to do, and when you first start out, you have to do this twice, because you have to have two loops on it. Okay, so now I'm back, get some more yarn here, I'm back around, so this is, now this is where I started. Now you just bring it back and you wrap it, you go again, you make a second turn. And you do this all the way around. Let's get this some more yarn. I hope you can see this, ladies. You do this all the way around. Okay. Now, fix that one, I am back to where I started. See, now I wrap it around the last, this is the last peg and this is the first peg. So, after you wrap it around the last peg, I bring it down between the 
first peg and your last peg. And then this little knob here will help you hold it so it doesn't come unraveled. Because it will. If you don't hold it tight, it will come unraveled. So, now, what you want to do is you pick up your hook. And you take your bottom loop. And the first one is a little hard to do. And you pull it over the first loop and then you just pull it down. So you take, separate these so you can see. You take your bottom loop from the bottom, you go up under, and you pull the bottom loop up over the peg, and then you push the loop that you have left down. And you that's all there is to it. That's all you do is you just hold this so it doesn't come unraveled. Bottom loop up over the top. And you can use your fingers, because once you get going, it's pretty easy and fast. And I just use my fingers and go around. So let me go ahead and complete this round for you. And then I will go off camera and complete the 13 rows. And I do this for 13 rows to make these. And you can change colors. in between, uh, Like you can do like six rows or seven rows. I usually do seven rows and then I change another color and I will show you how to do that. I will make this one into a different color and I will, when I reach that point, I will come back and show you how I switch colors. Uh, but I will finish up this row for you so you can see exactly how to do it. Just lift the loop up over and you can go on YouTube and there is uh, Lots of different. I think Mikey on uh, the Crochet Crowd, he has a tutorial on how to do the knitting looms. And you can also buy the straight knitting looms and you can make it straight. And if anybody is interested, I will show you how I knit uh, using, I use size 8 knitting needles. How I just make just a simple garter square, and you can use this also washing the dishes. But uh, I will show you if anybody's interested, leave a comment and let me know, and I will show you how easiest way to knit. I've been knitting for over 29 years now, so if anybody's interested in learning, I will show you the easiest way I learned how to knit. Okay, now I'm back to the beginning, and you just unwrap it. And then you just start wrapping around the first pig, and you continue this. And then when you get it all wrapped, you take the bottom up over the top, and you do that. I will come back, ladies, after I do uh, seven rows, and then show you how I switch colors so you can make it two-sided, or this is just a all-continuous one color. And this is the size for the small loom, and this is the size that you get for the the medium loom and I do 26 rows for to make it this size. So I will be back ladies when I finish. Okay YouTubers I am back. I have completed seven rounds now I'm ready to change colors. So this is how I do it. I cut some I'll uh, leave it like maybe three, four inches, just enough to tie. Then what I do is I take my new one, and this one here, this color here I chose today, is the uh, Cherry Chip, the Red Heart Super Saver yarn, the uh, Worsted Medium Four Ply yarn. This is the yarn that I like using for to make my dish cloths. So what I do is I just tie. First I make a loop, and then I make my slip knot rather. And I put it back on the first peg. I put it on. And tighten it a little bit because you still want it to be a little bit loose. And then what I do is I take the two tails. Let's turn it this way. I take the two tails here and I just tie them in a double knot. Pretty, pretty tight. You want it to be uh, close because it's going to uh, be the gap in between the two uh, loops, the two stitches. So 
So what I do is I just tie it pretty tight, and then so this would be this would be count since I'm uh, starting a new color. This here would be my first loop, as if I was just continuating around using my white yarn. So I take my new yarn, and you just do the same thing. You e wrap around the second peg, and then you just continue around as if you didn't change yarn. And now I did seven rows and I changed my yarn here on the eighth row. So I will do about six more rows. You can do as many rows as you want to make it. And the what the difference would be if you added more rows. Let me go ahead and finish get all the way around and then I will tell you to where I can put this down and pick up another and if you skip a peg it and you catch it you can easily just unwrap it and just you know rewrap but I've done that several times thought I've gotten all the way around and I discovered I didn't so okay so now I'm back to this is my last peg then I bring it down wrap it around to hold this so it doesn't Okay, and as I as I was saying is like here this these all of these pretty much are 13 rows. But as I was saying is the if you add more rows here the only difference it would make is it would become when you sew them together like this it would become just a, li a little bit bigger. But then you also you got to keep in mind ladies that the bigger you make it here on the smaller loom, it's going to be bulky here in the center. With this one here, um, I sewed it. I'll show you when I get to the point where how I sew them together and end them. But on this particular one here, I did not do, I didn't connect them. I didn't sew them together. And you could also use this. You can stuff it and use it as a baby ball, you know, or a cat toy whatever you prefer but say I will go and I what I'll do is to fix this so when I'm washing the dishes it's not gonna be all slight sloppy and slimy and slippery and whatever I will just put a few running stitches to hold these together but that's 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 what you can do to fix that problem if you did not sew it tight okay so now uh, back to this I will you just lift up, over, and down. And you do this for six more rows. I will do this for six more rows. I don't want to bore you sitting here watching me do six rows. So what I will do is I will complete the six rows. And when I'm ready to bind it off, cast it off, I will come back and show you how I do that. So stay tuned, ladies. <laughs> 